Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. Hope you had a great weekend. Okay, we begin uh, this week um, with well, a very, very serious matter. We're talking about the national, um, what, security, quite frankly. It doesn't get more serious than that. It's after security, after all that, all the rest are, follows. And we've been, um, arguably, we've been struggling with that for a while, you know. In fact, since the beginning of this administration, it's been getting um, uh, better, according to some, not so much, according to some. Well, the Minister of Information, Alaji Lai Mohammed, is our guest this morning. And um, he's just come from uh, a town hall meeting held in Kaduna, very, very, very re recently. It's the uh, 16th in the series. Uh, the 18th. Uh, the 18th. Yeah. So I'd say good morning to you, Alaji Lai Mohammed, and thank you very much for coming on the program today. Good morning, Mr. Polani. Indeed. So it's a pleasure to be here. Sure. Um, I was just talking about the Kaduna uh, meeting, and it was uh, about security. It was about the, the national security, and you wanted to hear from the people, and as well as report back to them uh, efforts so far. Now, Alaji, let me start from the beginning. When you came in, I mean this administration, when you came in first, um, it, 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 was, it was, you know, challenging, to put it that way. But the people were full of hope because they had voted for a change and they were expectant of that change. Uh, Alaji, do you think that we have had uh, indeed an appreciable change from what it was security wise when this administration came on uh, th thank you uh, mr polari yori please S thank you <laughs> uh, we've had there's no doubt that the country has uh, been facing a lot of uh, security challenges uh, some we inherited frankly speaking we inherited all of them be it um, Boko Haram, be it uh, Hesmen farmers clashes, be it ethno-religious crisis, be it, be it banditry, be it cultism, be it kidnapping for ransom. We inherited all of them. And the administration has been doing its best to return security across the country. But why we, why we got worried? and why we actually had to call the um, town hall meeting in Kaduna on the, uh, the 18th, 18th of, in the series. Yeah the, yeah, the 18th in the series. It was because uh, we realized that these security challenges were actually triggering of calls for separation, calls for secession, and we found this as very, very serious and very dangerous. So we said to call uh, this town hall meeting in Kaduna to see how we can build an elite consensus on the unity of Nigeria, on security of Nigeria, on the coexistence in Nigeria. This is why we called um, the town hall meeting in Kaduna. Uh, and this town hall meeting in Kaduna is very unique in many respects. Uh, in the first place, this is the first time where Kolei Taho meeting, where the panelists are actually not from the government side, where the panelists are actually from the academia, mm -hmm. the panelists are from the private sector, the panelists are from the uh, civil society organization. Uh, we, have, we, we had at that um, particular town hall meeting, we had uh, uh, Professor Jibrin Tahir, I'm sorry, Jibrin Ibrahim, who is a senior fellow at the Center for Democracy and Development as the lead discussant. We had Mrs. Ibukwa um, Woshika as a discussant. We have Professor Wazuriki, another professor and a former member of House of Representatives, as a discussant. We had Professor Sakanuru, a very renowned veterinary surgeon, as a discussant. And we have Professor Efogana. A goof, uh, yes, a, I think a Gafona of the University of Benin also as a discussant. Uh, and this is why I believe that this is uh, unique in the sense that we did not uh, just invite government to come and talk at people or talk to people. No, but rather let's hear from the other side of the wall. Mm -hmm. 
And another unique thing about the meeting was the attendance. The attendance was quite impressive. And we had all the major stakeholders in respect of you know, national unity and security in attendance. We had about eight ministers. The governor of Kaduna State and, uh, and his deputy were there. The governor of Zamfaras you know, uh, was represented by the uh, Commissioner for Education, I'm sorry, Commissioner for Information. The uh, Dr. Fayemi also sent a representative. And then we had all the service chiefs, all of them in person, and all security aides were there. At the same time, we had representatives from Yeti Allah, we had Pandev, we had the Senate leader in person himself. And then we had the uh, civil society organizations, women organization. We had, you know, Bishop uh, uh, Ferron who came all the way from London to attend this meeting. We had the Emmy of Fika, we had the Emmy of Zauza, we had the Emmy of uh, Kataf. Because, and if you see, when you look at this um, uh, attendance, you see that these are the major stakeholders when it comes to issue of security and unity in okay. Nigeria. And because Number one, uh, the people were invited. They, so, so it was a no holds bar in the presentation and discussion. Uh, it was televised live, and we were glad we did so because we heard from Nigerians truly what they felt could be, you know, the solution to national unity and national security. Again. The discussions were very robust. The discussion was very frank and very transparent. And at the end of the day, we came out. We came, you know, we, 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 we came out with certain resolutions, which we, which we all, which the House believe, will move the country forward. Because from the beginning, we made it clear that this is not just going to be another talk shop. Okay, because I was going to go there. Yes, there's not going to be another talk shop. Might this seen as another talk shop but when I thought when I looked at the reports that followed the meeting um, I, 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 I saw that um, uh, you know matters of secession were allowed talk about them bring them out there and so you know the, it was commented y upon y yes you see now it seemed that people thought from that is the public that participated that questions of equity fairness and justice are the real issues that are leading to calls for secession or breakaway and that kind of a thing. Um, how serious a charge is that? Um, the outcome of the meeting, or the town hall meeting, as reflected in the resolutions arrived at, uh, actually has shown that the people believe that certain actions must be taken if we want to stop the um, the push. If we, if, we, if we want to arrest the uh, push to the brink. Okay. Uh, the first thing that the house agreed upon was that they agreed that there must be the primacy of law and order in any human society. Two, the meeting resolved that the judiciary in Nigeria must be decentralized and reformed using the constitution, through constitutional amendment. It was also agreed that while calls for political restructuring mm -hmm. are okay, okay, that calls for separation or secession are not okay. Because the advance argument by you know various you know people that it will probably that it will take more energy to break up Nigeria mm -hmm. than actually to make it work. Okay. 
And like Professor Adiaja, he said in one of his uh, late Professor Adiaja said in one of his uh, lectures in 2002, he, he, he said the real advantage of Nigeria is that the real benefit, oh, sorry, that the greatest advantage Nigeria has as a nation is actually that it's diversity, that we should try and exp, you know exploit, ex, ex, exploit it more positively. But really, that you know, secession or separation is not an option. That was the consensus of the House too. Mm -hmm. It was also agreed in the House that state that state police creation of state police. Should be uh, should be supported by national assembly and state as well assembly, so that when you say governors are chief security officers, they should have real control of the security apparatus. Uh, it, uh, it was also these ideas coming from from the, uh, the from, participants from the particip from the, the list speakers yes. participants and that's what, what we are, were able to dis distill from the papers of the discussions and also the participants that came there. But only governments can make those kind of um, suggestions, resolutions are uh, meaningful. Absolutely, and that is why one of the things we said we are going to do we are going to share these resolutions with the government at state level and federal level and all the stakeholders. As a matter of fact, like I would need to also present as a council member mm -hmm. this report of the, uh, of the town hall meeting and already I have sought an you know, um, uh, appointment with the National Economic Council who will be meeting on Thursday to also discuss the outcome of this town hall meeting because we don't want it just to stop at the level of talk shop. Exactly. Now, exactly. To, uh, finally, I mean, sorry, in addition, it was agreed among, you know, uh, at the town hall meeting also that we need to give back to our traditional rulers the roles they used to play before the 1976 local government reform. Before then, our Australian rulers had the role to play in maintaining security and in maintaining you know, peace within their domains. Uh, it was also agreed at that meeting that governments at all levels must ensure that children of school age are given compulsory and free basic education. And the discussant took us back to 1973, when, according to him, that's Professor Ibrahim, the government of administration of Deragawan had a retreat. And at that retreat, he asked all the ministers and government officials to come out with one single pledge, one thing that will ensure that Nigeria will not go through a civil war again. According to Professor Ibrahim, he said they came up with just one solution, that all children born from January 1970, which was the end of the Civil War, must have compulsory and free primary education. That was what gave back to the UPE system, mm -hmm. the, the UPE policy. Mm -hmm. Regrettably, over time, this laudable policy had not been faithfully implemented. Because, and I think I, the whole, we all agree with Professor Ibrahim that uh, it is from the pool of these uneducated children that Boko Haram is recruiting, bandits are recruiting, secessionists are recruiting. So that all governments should go back to that pledge and ensure that uh, all 
school of children age have free compulsory basic education. Mm. And we, it was also agreed that a situation where we are going to have about 13.4 million students of school out of school. We are just helping the bandits. Uh, the, another resolution of the... I'm um, so, sorry, sir. Could I, could I just come in there? Yeah. Um, all of these, um, and as you said, you don't want to just end at the level of a talk shop. You want them to, you know, for, for, for life to be breathed into them. Um, but and you also said earlier that the primacy of the law no, no. Is, is all important. Now, there are people who have the perception of marginalization in their affairs. And if we're not all pulling in the same direction uh, in, our, in terms of our national affairs, if there are resentments um, that meritocracy doesn't work in this country, uh, so that you can't strive to be your best and hope that by virtue of that, you can move forward in life. Um, I don't know if you also, um, I'm, I'm sure you would have heard of these kind of things. Um, if you think they are real enough or big enough to cause the kind of um, turbulence that they do seem to be causing. You see, one of the resolutions of the of the, at the meeting was that every part of the country, in one way or the other, claims to be, to be marginalized. And the late discussant in particular took us back to 1951, the McPherson the Constitution. That the McPherson Constitution was the only constitution that guaranteed that no one part of the country would dominate the other. Now that is the only true federal constitution we ever had in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. that by the time, and that was operated up to 1960, 1966. You know, uh, I think between 19, when we became independent and, you know, and the first um, a coup, it was largely um, a, a, a federal constitution along the McPherson uh, uh, um, draft. And he said that the first problem that constitution suffered was, was, was when Midwest was created out of the former Western region. That was, that's when the ecosystem was changed, according to Professor you know, Ibrahim. And he still believes that until we have a truly federal constitution, where no one part of the country will feel marginalized, mm -hmm. or one part of the country will feel just change, will have, always have insecurity. Or one part of the country will feel specially feel privileged. privileged. Yes. And that is, why we, that is why it was recommended that restructuring is okay. It's only the cry for secession that is not okay. So, and what is restructuring? Restructuring, it's a, uh, it's quite a complex and you know, uh, very vast area. You know, and uh, even though there's a lot of consensus on, on, on consensus on the restructuring, actually. Uh, what research, research only means to one person mm. is not to the other. Uh, like uh, Professor Ibrahim said, he, he said, when you look at our 1979 constitution, for instance, and 1979 constitution, for instance, there are about 68 of their you know, um, matters on the exclusive legislative list, while there are only about 30 or so on the uh, concurrent legislative list. And he's suggesting that some of the things that uh, you know, we are on the legislation should be given back to the states and the local governments. So everybody has his own view about structuring. And you see, if we sit down together and say this is the area we want to go on structuring, I think that is what the House said is, you know, is going to be uh, uh, a panacea. And then, of course, uh, like I said, it, 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 we also agree that local governments should be given autonomy and that this autonomy who allow them to be able to, you know, address the issues of development 
in their domain. But these were just suggestions from participants at that town hall meeting. This really has no force of officialdom behind it. Mr. Folani, I have told you twice now, sorry, that yes, one of the resolutions is that these resolutions will be shared with, with. all stakeholders. Mm. And I've told you the step we've taken that I'm even meeting on Thursday to address the National Economic Council that this, the, this is what transpired at the town hall meeting. Because it's not everything that is for the states to do. I mean, so, it's not everything that is for the federal government to do. It's not everything that is for the states to do. A lot also will depend on, what, on the National Assembly because when the, 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 the idea of state police, unless it's supported, by the National Assembly and the State House Assembly, it cannot go. The issue of decentralization of the judiciary will need support from the National Assembly. The issue of autonomy to local government will need support of governors. The issue of um, uh, traditional rulers being given more rules, it will have to be a National Assembly and everybody. So this is what we said, we intend to share the views of this, the outcome of this, national, of this uh, town hall meeting with all the stakeholders. And those stakeholders include governors, they include National Assembly members, they include the Federal Executive Council, and they even include all players in the ecosystem. It was also agree agreed that the present animal husbandry system must change okay and that open grazing uh transhumans is no longer acceptable and that we should build more ranches build more establish more grazing reserves with all modern amenities it, it, it looks like the... Uh, uh, and this, fortunately, is one of the easiest things that I think we can achieve because already there's the National Livestock Transformation Plan by the federal government, which is looking at this. And some states have already, you know, uh, queued into this. You know, it's, it's quite interesting because, um, again, as I had the privilege of looking at the report of the um, meeting, you find that... Um, Different people have different uh, concepts depending on what their own concern is. Uh, for instance, you, you said that Mayete Allah was actually invited. Was, uh, yes. And they actually, uh, there was complaints in there that nobody is looking at our case. Well, you know, uh, no, no, nobody is looking at our case, that we've lost millions of heads of cattle. Uh, we've, nobody is thinking of, pallia, of, of compensation. Even when it came to palliatives, nobody remembered Mayeti Allah or uh, such uh, organizations. Uh, I, I, I'm glad you, you know. brought that matter up. You yeah. See, the, the, so it was very divergent views. All of them, in a very civil manner, were expressed under them. There was even a lady, you know, a heads... Uh, it was the... Was I it, think, uh, yes, heads the, woman? The, I think <laughs> the vice chairman for he, Kaduna said, yes, yes, yes. of me yeah. Yes. So you, you see, you, you, you have everybody presenting it from the way they see it. Um, other people, of course, are saying that Meete Allah is certainly not being fair. They've made some very provocative statements, uh, although, you know, later on, well, people come yeah, on and temper you, them a you, bit, you, you know. You, you see, you've just made the point about uh, the issue of marginalization. At that town meeting, Meete Allah people came and said, we are marginalized. That the COVID-19 affected us more than any other sector of the economy. They said, but when palliatives had been distributed, nobody remembered them. And that was their own legitimate position. So that's why I believe that uh, to resolve the problem of Nigeria, we must talk to one another, not talk at one another. Hmm. Because when you talk to one another, you begin to realize that even the people who you believe are oppressing you also have their own complaints. The average mate, I think one of the, uh, uh, one of the participants also said, look, what are we talking about? 
We do not benefit from your schooling. We don't benefit from your roads. We don't benefit from your rail system. So what are you talking about? And this is why we believe that this kind of town hall meeting, where everybody, Pandev, Mieti, Allah, will, you know, they air their views, is healthy for the unity of the country, provided we're able to follow through with the recommendations. And I'm glad that one of the recommendations that we arrived at, which is that the military, the police, and the security agencies should be expanded in number. And modern technology, modern arms should be given to them, was echoed yesterday yeah. by the Minister of Defense in Maiduguri, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. means there's actually not too much discrepancy between what the government is going to is doing or intends to do and what was decided at this town hall meeting indeed um uh, talking about that since you, you just happened to mention to touch on that aspect of security the police we've been hearing from experts that how many policemen do we have it's abysmally inadequate for our needs. They said it's in the region of 300,000, I hear. Uh, the army itself is perhaps even slightly larger. Now, uh, we, we, we've come to know this. and then oh, it, even smaller, probably. It, it probably even smaller. Yeah. Every Nigerian has come to know this, and it's good that at a meeting that you had called, uh, a town hall meeting, this was echoed again. Um, what can we do about these problems, because um, these issues, uh, because we know that competing, uh, you know, the uh, competing, you know, needs, yes, yes. you know, yes. uh, limited that, 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 resources, that, yes, that's what but I, security. That's why I'm glad that the Minister of Defense, when he went on a tour of the of, of, uh, of, of um, uh, the Northeast yesterday, in company of the Chief of Defense Staff, actually said. We are going to employ more people in the army. We are going to provide them with better equipment to fight. So, which means the government is, knows that we have to do this. Yeah. This yeah. Truth, it was very cheering news to me. But this, the truth is, though, that people are, should I use the word scared, uh, about the security situation? It's become almost uh, reckless. It goes from kidnapping to, you know, and, and, all, and all those ills. Um, yet, government is not sleeping. But one wonders if government actually um, had a complete view of the matter when we were promised change back in the day. Uh, or was it that on coming in, see that, um, oh dear, this is a complete mess and um, we didn't quite get the grasp of it when we were on the outside. But before you respond, sir, uh, let me bring in um, um, Ajose. Mr. Ajose has called in from Sudulere. Good morning, Mr. Ajose. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Good morning, uh, Honorable Minister. Mr. Mr. Ajose, Mr. good morning. How are you doing? Very well, sir. Very well. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. You've said so much. Now, my main worry is this. How can you please assure or convince Nigerians that the outcome of the town hall meeting is going to be anything as in the treatment of the outcome, the capacity to, to implement is going to be different from series of talks we've had in the past. That's one. Second way, sir. Do you believe that APC as a party has been fairly honest to Nigerians vis-a-vis the manifesto concerning restructuring? Please, well, this uh, so, so, sorry, sir. I, I, I was going to I, I, forgive me, forgive me, Mr. Right. Jose. Forgive me, Mr. Jose. I think the two questions we'll have to do, so we make room for other people. Thank you very much for understanding, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jose. Uh, on the issue of um, um, uh, making sure that this is just not another talk show. Yes, like I said, that we 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 made two pledges. 
Or rather, we made a request from the panelists that don't come here and just give us the challenges we are facing. Come up also with implementable solutions. Mm -hmm. And we also promised the town meeting that on our own part, we will share the outcome of this meeting with the government and all stakeholders. And like I said here, I don't know whether Mr. Justin has, uh, Justin you, you has have a meeting thing, set up already. That I have already, already have a meeting set up to meet the National Economic Council, which is populated by all governors of all the 36 states, members of National Assembly, turned over by the Vice President, all stakeholders, and we would present this to them. I'm, I'm going to, uh, sorry sir, yes. I'm, I'm going to, uh, the second question he asked, which was about APC, about uh, uh, you see, whether Mr. it in, uh, indeed delivered on its promise. You see, um, Mr. Jose, I am here today to, dis to discuss the issue of the um, town hall meeting, especially in the area of security and nationality. And I said that the consensus is that Restructured call political restructuring is okay. That's the consensus of the meeting, but no secession. And that this again would put across to government. Okay. This again would put across to all the major stakeholders. But the fine tuning of what actually is meant by political restructuring is a different thing. But I can see from my own recommendation and also from the recommendation of the of the of the resolution of the town hall meeting that decentralizing the judiciary, getting state police to be established, giving better role to our traditional rulers, and the like are all part of people who have been, you know, you know uh, uh, clamoring for restructuring. Of course, there's other areas, uh, the other people who say, oh, Let's go back to what it used to be in 1965-66, where the states will have complete control over all the resources of that state, and then they only pay royalty and you know tax to federal government. Again, those are did this. But the consensus of that town hall meeting is that yes, political structuring should be looked into. Okay. And this is what we are going to take to government. Okay. Um, uh, Reverend Dominic, um, good morning, sir, and thank you very much for holding on. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Yori. Good, good morning. morning, Honorable Minister. Good, good morning, morning Mr. Pa Pastor Dominic. Reverend, Reverend Dominic. Reverend Dominic, mm. thank you. Uh, Honorable Minister, you have spoken very well. Thank and you, sir. in 2015, if it's good Nigeria, the situation we find ourselves to it's quite obvious to the blind and to the deaf. What we find ourselves today, the security challenges, is obvious to everybody. But, Honorable Minister, I am worried as you continue to establish the points made in Cardinal Okano on this Hatta Hall meeting. Honorable Minister, I want to ask a sincere question, if you can answer it. Is there any point made in this communique that is new to you? I've followed you for over 15, 17 is there, years. Is there Remember? any what? Dominic? Is there anything, any suggestion made in this meeting that is new to the other minister? Okay. That is, that's the fourth year. Okay. Please, can you say this clearly? Is there any point made here that is the first time you have had it? This is what I wanted to answer Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you for calling in, Reverend Dominic. Uh, Reverend Dominic, yeah, like they say, there's nothing new under the sun. Or under the sky, as they say. Uh, what is unique about this town hall meeting, I don't know whether uh, when Dominic was able to follow from the beginning. So this is the first time we have a town hall meeting where the panelists are not from the government side, where the panelists are actually from the, you know, was the other side. And I said also that it was resolved that this is not going to be a talk show. But when you say other side, you mean civil society, See, private, yes, citizen, private citizen, yes. in, you know, That's exactly the, what academia. I mean. the academia. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. And then it was resolved also that, please don't come and tell us the usual thing, that these are, your chal these are the challenges we are facing. Give us implementable resolutions. Mm -hmm. 
Thirdly, we also pledged that we are going to make available and share with everybody, all the stakeholders, the outcome of these resolutions. And we have already started. As a matter of fact, by coming here today to speak on Mr. Polarin's uh, program, is sharing this outcome with all the stakeholders. Even though it was telecast live. Even though uh, it was telecast live from the, from the beginning. The fact that I have also agree, I have also decided I'm going to also give this report mm -hmm. to the National Economic Council on Thursday is further proof of how serious we are about bringing this to attention of all the stakeholders. Okay, uh, Mr. Gabriel in Yola. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry about but, that. But See if you can call in a, again. There was a question you asked just before the question before, before the callers came in uh, about whether yes, I remember you, you asked about whether the we were surprised or we, that we, after we, yes you, you see uh, uh, after arriving Dr. Fol uh, uh, Mr. Uh -huh. Folari, he, uh, the thing is that is, uh, the thing is that you cannot enter water and start completing it is cold. A government assumes liabilities and assets and it must continue to find solutions. Yeah, but the government was very critical of the situation, the security situation in the country before ascending to power. It and had said that the, it would actually it, address it, this issue. It, yes, you see... Um, Some would say the, it has the, got the, worse. The, the, doctor, I mean, Mr. Polari, <laughs> I would want to say that you are trying to open a Pandora box, which is very wide. Because I don't want to start here and say, what was the situation in 2015 when he came? What is the situation today in the area of security, in the area of the economy, in the area of, you know, uh, 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 I I that will be a topic for another day. But one thing which is important, I must say here, is that okay. you see a situation where elites, in particular, are encouraging attacks on symbols of authority, on symbols of governance, can only lead to anarchy. Situation where elites who will be the first to flee this country. You're talking about the NSAS kind of situation. No, 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 at least who, who will be the first to flee this country. Okay. At least you have more than one passport. Okay. And who are goading people to say that, you know, do this, do that. I think it's it not is so that those are the kind of people instigating it's the it, others. Oh, you see, look, this morning, uh, some, uh, such as, uh, a day before we went to, to Kaduna, we saw how some hoodlums went and attacked the correctional center in Willie. In a way, I'm going to come back okay. to this. But I'll, I'll, I must interrupt uh, yes. now because I'm, I've held Clifford in Badagri on for oh, too oh, long. Okay. But we'll, we'll pick up from here. Oh, uh, good morning, uh, Clifford, and thank you very much for holding on. Thank you, thank you, my brother. Please, uh, I want to ask uh, the minister telling certain things that is wrong that we are, we are not doing that causing the problem in Nigeria. They don't bring it up. They leave the main thing and discuss other issues. In Nigeria today, after today, don't, Nigeria is so big that most every other person, where nobody will be angry. But I look at this present administration that in appointment, even in MPC, they don't want to dominate it. Everywhere they dominate. There's not see anything wrong with it. The military, the immigration, custom, all those areas. People are angry with all these things. We want to we all the have on Nigeria. Nigeria is mine, it's yours. You should not be one sided. The other day, the Gandhi and Mahara said the, the Northerners, Igbos, and the Yorubas, and the, and the Igbos are minority, majority minority. Look at that language. It's provoking. This is a big problem. It will give all the people the I thought they give them the strength to start reacting to this thing. The problem they make in both eh, action they take is what is put on your act today. Look at the previous administration, it wasn't like this. Okay. People um, become like they are marginalized. In policy making, everything is one sided. That's the problem. Let them go back to that whole meeting, begin to discuss this thing again, bring them up, so that any place that enters Nigeria, whether Austria, Nibo, Yoruba, or any other place, will obey the law. Thank Let you very much, Clifford. 
Thank you for your call, Clifford. Appreciate uh, your call. You, uh, uh, yes, I, you see, Clifford, yeah, I don't know at which point you joined this conversation. Hmm. And I think one of the points that was made was that we missed the point when the McPherson Constitution was jettisoned and we had a constitution today. We, we are too much powers, according to the um, lead discussion, is concentrated in at the center. And one of the recommendations we have made with the House, I mean, with the town meeting agreed upon, is decentralizing mm. Mm. police, decentralizing uh, judiciary, decentralizing, you know, local governance. By the time these things are done, well, the they have to, when they are presented, that, yes, and then they are agreed, mm -hmm. then the issue of, you know, domination. Well, by no means a certainty. Uh, uh, you see, uh, we, 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 we live for hope. The fact that the matter is being discussed openly, is being, you know, uh, conversed openly, is being discussed openly, I think it's a step in the right direction. Okay, I, like to, I, I interrupted you when you were going to comment on the yes. Imo Oweri yes. correctional I, I, yes. assault. You, you see, the correctional institution exactly. assault. You see, you see uh, Mr. Polani, when the symbols of authority, like the police, the correctional center, are being attacked by non-state actors, then you are calling for anarchy and for chaos. And when there's anarchy or chaos, the end result is better imagined. But I want to say here that no government will fold its arms and allow non-state actors, whoever they are, to continue to attack the symbols of authority and governance. Okay. And we want to appeal to all stakeholders that the government will not stand by. And they want all those that they are sponsoring to attack police, to attack the military, that the government will not stand for it. Stand for it. Um, Mazi Okoroafo and Arochuku, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Honorable Minister, sir. My name is Okoroafo. Honorable Minister, sir. Yes, all right, sir, sir. Thank you, sir. You have seen that today the security you are talking about based on the state of security in Nigeria. What does it take the federal government to give express approval to the governors to start their own that is private security that in terms of logic and community policing? That's number one working to We have seen the rate of unemployment is increasing. So can you just help us? What makes the Twitter to carry their headquarters from Nigeria? To Ghana. And now, all those that have been employed, you know how many thousand, how many have been employed? They are now into the market. What do we do in order to salvage what the situation that has really happened now that Twitter has gone to Ghana? Okay. In the first, okay. in the first, in the first question. question. In the first question, Marzi, your first question was uh, go, go over the first question my again. Question, my, my first question is this. What does it take? The federal okay. government of Nigeria mm -hmm. to give an express approval to governors to start community policing. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for Mr. Okorefo, for thank you. Uh, if you, I don't know again, uh, if you listen very carefully to my explanation, one of the outcome of the town hall meeting is that the National Assembly and the State House Assembly should support the creation of state police. So what you need is that you need a constitutional amendment before you can create state police. And that is one of the resolutions in, uh, that was made. Two, the issue of Twitter. What is a, is a, is a question I'm very reluctantly addressing because people know my views on this. It is very simple. If you continue to demarket your own country, you get the kind of result. 
you, you are getting from Twitter. Okay, for, for, for the benefit of those viewers who might not know what we're talking about, Twitter oh, recently yeah, set its regional headquarters yes. in neighboring Ghana. Absolutely. And we are the big brother of Africa. Absolutely. So a lot of people felt, you know, that was well, egg on our face. No, well, you see, there are 25 million Twitter users in Nigeria as opposed to the 8 million Twitter users in Ghana. So logically and commercially, one would have expected Twitter to set up its headquarters in West Africa, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And after they even said that, look, even though they have set up their headquarters in Accra, their market is in Nigeria. And my explanation is very simple. When you tell the world that your country is not safe for investment, you tell the world that there's no democracy in your country, you tell the world that your country is a dictatorship, they will not come to invest in your country. But the reality of things, and that's, and you're literally bringing me back to the NSAS thing. Like, it's no. Because I would have said of, so. It's, it's, uh, I agree, it is I, not. I would have said, why, as you put it, uh, we, they or we, yeah, since Nigerians, yeah. telling the world those things. Yeah, well, why? I, 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 we, we, because I, they, they might say, we're not making these no, things up. Exactly. That's what Come I said. and check it out. No, excuse, that's why I said, when you start the marketing your own country. Okay. And then, I mean, look, the moment you start beating your wife, or your neighbors, when you're not around, will, be, will help you beat her also. <laughs> yes! Uh, Donald no, in no, Port Harcourt. No, no, it's very important. Uh, I, 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 this, I, I, this Twitter matter. No, I've not finished my Okay. Um, uh, Donald, no, could you hold on for a while? Donald, one second. One second, please, Donald. Donald. Second. You see, sir, look at during the answers protest. There's a record that Twitter was supporting the NSAS protesters. Just on record. However, when a similar thing happened in the US, the first thing Twitter did was to suspend the president's uh, account. When, the, on, on, on January 6th, when Capitol Hill was invaded, the first thing they did was to, they, and why did they suspend his account? They said it was the fake news mm -hmm. that led to that invasion. Okay. Was not fake, was, what about the fake news in answers when they were tweeting that 88 people had been killed? And CNN was reporting. And CNN was reporting. And US, was the letter retracted? Yes, and U.S. Department came last week to say there's no independent corroboration of any massacre at the... Indeed. I, 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 so, I, I, so we, uh, the marketing of our country, yeah. you know, it so probably so, has a part no, no, in the decision no, no, Twitter no, made. No, no, Twitter clearly has his own reasons for going to Accra. But the fact that the same Twitter suspended the account of the, uh, former Donald President Donald Trump because of fake news, and you cannot see that what they were tweeting from there is fake news, shows you that, you know, to, uh, we, have, we have a problem. But more importantly for me, is that there's no country without challenges. We must be more patriotic. Okay. Uh, uh, Donald, are you still there? Donald? Oh. Please, please go ahead now, Donald. But Donald, you're going to have to lower the volume of your TV set. Pata, pata. Aha. Excellent. C continue, please. Hello. Hi. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Minister. Good morning, morning sir. Okay. Um, I would have a lot of questions today, but this is my first time of seeing you live. Okay. Thank I you. I want sir. to congratulate you, and I also encourage you to also continue to make this kind of appearance for Nigerians to add their view, because this is another means of making Nigeria still belonging. Thank you very much. Th thank you very much, sir. Oh, thank you very much. That, that's it, Donald. Okay, Donald in Port Harcourt. A note of encouraging for the minister. That's very kind uh, of And you. actually, we, we, we've just about uh, run out of time. But many things came out of the Kaduna uh, version of, of, of this town hall meeting. And you've explained again and again that resolutions that came out of it will now be taken upstairs, so to speak, for consideration and possible assent. But you seem to also be cautioning that with law and order, you know, the judiciary rule of law and all of that being, you know, uh, sent forward and center, it will have to go through processes. 
Yeah, it will have to be go through processes. Yes. Because uh, uh, um, somebody asked, um, what does it take for, for government uh, to the, just... The, the, we, cannot, we cannot... You see, we, we have a constitution. I know. The government cannot... But they are probably thinking fiat. that if Mr. President, if Abuja, you know, um, really wanted these things, uh, uh, that is accepted, understood, and pushed for it, everybody the National Assembly would see that this is a national question. But Mr. Folari, as we speak today, there's a constitutional amendment going on in the National Assembly. Let Nigerians please go there for the public hearing and let them please go and submit memoranda as to what, to what they want. The Deputy Senate President, he hates that constitution. And I, re I, I learned just uh, yesterday that the 58 member committee have been broken into I think, six or four, or four groups mm -hmm. to address and consider this, you know, the, 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 these issues. So Nigerians should please take ownership of their country and go forward and stop mumbling and complaining. Okay. Let them go forward. They are, they, 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 it is their own senators, their own representatives who are there. This is the kind of you know amendment we want. This, this, this is going on now. I hear you. Um, it's 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 not a simple it's not a simple task. It's a very complicated and delicate task. But sir, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that you see, even what I am also meeting, like I said, I'm meeting NEC, I'm going to meet the National Assembly, I'm going to meet the Senate President also, and say, this is what is being recommended, and I hope that this is already what is being considered. Mm -hmm. And you said you hope to be putting forward a memo to the to, to the Council to on these issues, yes. On, on this yes, very issue. issues, yes. Well, in these circumstances, and, well, there are many other things, but as you said, some of them are Pandora boxes are not for today, uh, some of them uh, are much uh, more uh, involved. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, but, but the issue today that bothers me a lot is that overnight, you know, uh, there was another attack in Oka, police headquarters, and unfortunately, I think two policemen were been, have been killed and then several injured. But you see, when this goes on, this is a recipe for anarchy. If not, when you start, if not tar when, when you start targeting policemen, you start targeting military formation, then who's going to protect the country? You know, it's one particular country, uh -huh. and I'm, I can assure you that the, 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 the government will not fall in some. So uh -huh. when the government comes after those hoodlums, mm -hmm. I, think they should, I think all patriotic Nigerians should support government. Anandilai Mohammed, I want to thank you very much, you know, Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, uh, for coming on to, you know, uh, brief us, as it were. Thank uh, you on the Kaduna meeting and matters of security in the country. There are so many things that came out. Uh, another uh, pet subject of yours, um, the abolishment of um, 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 hate speech, for instance. Yes. There are aspects to well, it. I don't you know, know that that the just said that most of these authorities even fueled by fake news and disinformation, which I, and I think we we'll need to devote another program, uh, program to this. I want to thank you very much, Alaji Laima. Mr. Fran, it's always a pleasure to be here. Indeed. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Sir. Thank you very much, sir. Indeed. So that's our program today. Um, please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. Our thanks to the Honorable Minister once again for coming on. Um, as I always say, it is an emergency. I'm talking about um, COVID-19. So keep all the protocols that we've been advised. Wash your hands frequently. Mask up everywhere. Don't be in crowds unnecessarily. And by all means, go get the jab. <laughs> go get the jab. Um, don't be among those Nigerians that are uh, still a bit lethargic about it. But every man to his own. See you tomorrow, God willing. I'm Yori Folani. Bye-bye for now.